Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Much like General Patton, Donald Trump believes the best defense is a good offense. So after BuzzFeed published an unverified document suggesting he'd been co-opted by the Russian government, Trump launched an all-out attack on the press during today's news conference, his first since last July. It was a high-energy event, to say the least. Here's a highlight reel of what happened. I will be the greatest jobs producer that God ever created. As far as hacking, I think it was Russia, but I think we also get hacked by other countries and other people. I will say again, I think it's a disgrace that information would be let out. Uh, I saw the information, I read the information outside of that meeting. Uh, it's all fake news. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen. It was a group of opponents that got together, sick people, and they put that crap together. Hacking's bad, and it shouldn't be done. But look at the things that were hacked. Look at what was learned from that hacking. If Putin likes Donald Trump, guess what, folks? That's called an asset, not a liability. Now, I don't know that I'm going to get along with Vladimir Putin. I hope I do, but there's a good chance I won't. Well, I'm not releasing tax returns because, as you know, they're under audit. But every president uh, since the 70s... Oh, gee, I've never heard that. Oh, gee, I've never business. heard that. Don and Eric are going to be running the company. They are going to be running it in a very professional manner. They're not going to discuss it with me. Again, I don't have to do this. Go ahead. President Go ahead. Since you are attacking no, our news not you. Not you. you Your organization, you Sarah. Organization. Your organization, you Sarah. As far as BuzzFeed, which is a failing pile of garbage, writing it, I think they're going to suffer the consequences. They already are. So news organizations publish untrue content all the time, but to their credit, it's usually by accident. On Tuesday, BuzzFeed chose to release a 35-page dossier on Trump whose contents even BuzzFeed's editors admitted could not be verified. In fact, the publication said explicitly, quote, the report contains errors. BuzzFeed's conduct may be among the worst excesses of yellow digital journalism, but many are arguing their decision to publish that piece was justified. We're joined now by Matthew Ingram of Fortune Magazine, who authored a piece today defending BuzzFeed. Matthew, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for so, having me. One of my favorite reporters, uh, Michael Tracy, wrote something this morning that made me think of this. He said, and I'm quoting, he said, WikiLeaks relentlessly attacked for publishing verified, authentic information. BuzzFeed is cheered for publishing what is a total sham. Y you have been critical of WikiLeaks for publishing emails that did not belong to them, and yet you're cheering the publication of material that is clearly wrong. Why? In fact, I was supportive of WikiLeaks. Um, I, I support their attempts to publish documents that would otherwise go unpublished. I support BuzzFeed's decision to do the same when those documents are clearly part of an important story. They said they were unverified. They didn't say that everything in there was true. All they said was these documents are being discussed at the highest levels. Senior intelligence agents have effectively said this source is credible, and yet no one is showing you this document. I think they did a public service. Well, first of all, I just read a piece that you wrote criticizing the release of those WikiLeaks emails. But to the point of on BuzzFeed, there are lots of things that are discussed privately, especially during campaigns, and you're a working journalist, so you know this well, that we don't publish because we're not certain if they're true. And the bar is higher when they're personal and they're damaging to people's reputations. And isn't it our job to verify their veracity? Isn't that why we exist? Isn't that why we have reporters in the first place? Sure it is, and I'm not saying that that shouldn't happen. In fact, BuzzFeed is working and has been working for months, according to Ben Smith, to verify the things that are in that document. So it's not that by publishing they're saying we accept all of these things as true. What they're saying is that this document has been presented to the president, has been presented to senior members of the intelligence community, and all the current, all the reporting before BuzzFeed said there is this document but we're not going to tell you what's in it but it's really important and in fact it could affect the entire trump administration it could call into question the entire government isn't that something that people should be able to see well i don't know if it's not true it's not going to affect the trump administration presumably in unless the media trotted out there and treat it as if it's significant look you know as well as i we hear all kinds of things i've heard all sorts of things about barack obama's romantic life for example i have no idea if any of them are true i hope they're not I would never report that. They're probably lies spread by his opponents. 
That often happens. D Isn't it irresponsible to pass on something you can't verify? I, I don't understand how you couldn't see that as a journalist. Well, look, news organizations of all kinds, including the New York Times, the Washington Post, some of the leading journalistic organizations out there, routinely write stories that are based on information that they haven't verified. Did the New York Times verify all the information that was in all the emails that they reported on? No. Did they, re did they verify every fact that was in information that they got from intelligence sources? No. They, they based those reports on the credibility of the source. That's and right. in this case, you've got a senior intelligence agent who w is reportedly credible, according to CNN sources, is, is, whose information has become part of a document that was presented by the senior intelligence chiefs of the United States, comes from a source that, according to the Wall Street Journal, worked in, in Russia for a decade or more, has 20 years of experience in Russia. That sounds like a credible source to me. No, so it actually, seems to me I, it's I think worth you've got the this, this, this story wrong. I mean, let me just say to your first point, journalists publish information, as I said at the outset, all the time that's wrong. They trust sources when they shouldn't. But they almost never publish information that they know to be inaccurate, as BuzzFeed did and admitted at, in the introduction to the piece. Second, we don't know much yeah, about Yeah, there were place senior... names that were inaccurate. There were place okay, names but, that were inaccurate. There were people's names that were inaccurate. That doesn't but, but, mean the central facts of the document are inaccurate. It just means the person was in a hurry. But we don't know that any of it is true, and some of it apparently is false. It's been denied by everybody involved in it, and there's no evidence that any of it is true. And by the way, it was not written by any senior <laughs> intelligence official. It was written as campaign opposition research by a private sector guy in Great Britain, we think. That's all we know. He was not a member of, of MI6. We know CIA officer wrote this. This is not official intelligence information. And by the way, the intel agencies scoop up all kinds of rumor, innuendo, disinformation, as you know, all the time. We would never publish sure that if it hurt Hillary Clinton, ever, would we? I think lots of organizations would, and I think lots of organizations effectively did exactly that. So why is this different? N if it, name if it name is a news organization. Well, then name one. You just made the allegation. I, I, have, I have literally no idea what you're talking about. I covered the campaign pretty closely. Name a major news organization that published knowingly untrue information about Hillary Clinton that came from an intelligence source. I, I don't know what you're talking you're about. Saying Buzzfeed, you're saying BuzzFeed knows this to be untrue. I'm saying they know that certain facts in this dossier are provably untrue, and they have not proven and they a single that. fact in here, and they're conceding it. So. Your justification so did of every, well, did every people detail, are talking about it. Did every detail of every Hillary, Hillary Clinton story, was it verified by the journalistic organizations that published those stories? Yes or no? No, no. There okay. were details, however, So then that why is that acceptable and this is not? This because is, not this is a from a single, senior intelligence source. I'll tell you, I'll tell if you. you what, no, it's not if from you a, read that Wall Street Journal story, this guy are, was a senior MI6 agent, decades of experience in Russia. I'm, I'm this is sorry. not a guy who just wandered in he, off the street he, this, what and you said he heard something in Moscow about incorrect. Donald Trump. This was not written okay. by a senior MI6 official. This was written by a guy who works for a corporate intelligence company in London who may or may not have worked for British intelligence. He is not a member of British intelligence. He did not write this as a member of British intelligence. A. B. Not one He was a member was, of British intelligence. Not what he, he wrote is this. Is the Wall Street wasn't. Journal story true? And nobody think? is... That British intelligence came up with this dossier? I think you are factually wrong on that point. British intelligence is the Wall Street Journal story I'm not about who the produced Wall this Journal. correct? I'm merely saying this is not a product of British intelligence. It is the product of a private company in London. A. B. Yes. To Hillary's emails, That's not accurate. a single one was proven wrong. Not one. And so, by the way, lots of news organizations passed on it. But when this is proved totally false, not one person is saying this is true. There's not one person to stand up and say this is true, including the man who purportedly wrote it. So would you publish this yourself if you were running a news organization? Yes. Then you have low standards. I'm sorry. We devalue <laughs> our credibility when we publish things that we know aren't true and can't prove are true. To pass on something like this, not a defense of Trump. I would say you, this about Obama and Hillary. This is, a document, this is a document that made up a briefing by all the senior intelligence agencies in the United States for the president of the United States. This is an important document that's been circulating through the highest levels of the U.S. government. Okay. It, You're throwing it's, words it's around you don't understand. It's been the subject of letters from senators. The this is a document John that people McC need to no. see. 
This came across John McCain's desk, and he passed it by his own admission to the director of the FBI, who sent it up the chain because who knows what this is. Not one person has said it's true. Not one person has said, I believe this is true. Not one person implicated in it has said, I have evidence that it's true. There's no evidence at all that it's true. It's almost certainly false. You know it. And for political reasons, you think it's okay. And I'm just saying that to values this, journalism. That's my only point. According to, according to a senior BBC reporter, he has an, a source that has made the same allegations. All right. That's two sources now. Are you saying <laughs> the BBC is reporting things that aren't, I'm, that aren't I don't true? even know who this guy is. It wouldn't be a first. I don't, know who, I don't even know who you're talking about. If evidence comes in, this is true. If anybody involved in this can say, I was there, I know this is true, here's the evidence, I'll be the first one to say, wow, Donald Trump, what's this about? But it doesn't exist yet, and so we shouldn't be throwing around hearsay. We exist to stop hearsay, not perpetuate it. I'm out of time. I'm sorry. Matthew, thank you. Good to see you. Thanks.